one more verse I will say, and that is the real love I need to know, I need to exercise, and that is the only love that really works. The other loves are loves that do not work God's people. They do not work properly, and they can be failure, and in the world we see so many people who are in this failure and who are hurt. And then what happens that it's a chain. Hurt people hurt people. Those who are hurt, they will hurt. And that's a, uh, that's a powerful saying, hurt people hurt people. That's a reality, God's people. I want to talk about this love that has come to live in us. I believe in the Song of Solomon, this love is mentioned. And just remember what kind of love is this? What is the characteristic of this love? Again, I don't think this love is a creed. I could tell you very clearly that this love again is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. God himself is love. God is love. Set me as a seal. I'm reading from Song of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 6. That is another very powerful statement. And if men of God, a people of God, if Christian begin to begin to agree with the love that is in their heart, that is a shed abroad in their heart, I tell you, there will be powerful explosion of evangelism. There will be explosion of evangelism everywhere. You will go to the shopping mall, you can go to the shop, you can go around in your work and you will see the power of this love. Where man's love is a complete failure, this love will never ever fail. This love is God. Our God's very name is love. And this is another a wonderful revelation of love. I believe we will choose to agree uh, agree to believe that this love has been sown in us. This love has come to live in us. Verse 6, it set me as a seal upon thy, uh, upon thy heart. And this is uh, the bride saying to the bridegroom, as a seal upon thine arm. Set me as a seal upon thine heart first. And then she says, as a seal upon thine arm. And that's what people do, the lovers do, and our Lord has figured even our, our face, our, our figure on the palm of his hand. That's another marvelous truth that we need to agree with. If he lives in us, simply think about it. If God has come to live in us, what will happen? If we really believe it, if we walk with this consciousness, and if we walk in the reality of this truth that God has come to live in us. It's written here, for love is strong as death. Has anyone power against death? When it comes, it comes. It doesn't spare a person. Death is all powerful, I should say, before people. Because and love is called death. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. And do you know what? Our God is a jealous God. He loves us so much, he doesn't want us to be harmed. So this also is a very wonderful fact. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals therefore are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. It cannot be quenched. God's people, that love is in us. Well, the other love comes in doses, but this God, love comes in a person. That's the difference between the human love and according to this uh, uh, photo that my brother sent me, this love does not come in doses. You, you don't need to increase the dose of this love because this love is a person this love is perfect, this love is perfect, and this love 
is clean. You cannot increase this love. You cannot decrease this love. You cannot corrupt this love. And this love is our Lord Jesus Christ who has come to live in us and who has established his kingdom in us. And he is the one who can deal with every awkward habit that we have, every awkward thing that dogs us around and every sin that overpowers us. He can break and as we have been singing, singing, he canceled the power of sin. Sin's power is canceled. It has, it has no power over you if I'm willing to obey. You know, I can choose not to obey. Just as Cain heard from the Lord and the Lord told Cain, overpower the sin. It is waiting for you. Do not let him overpower. And he listened, but then he was overpowered by sin. And do not have the kind of life that Cain had. So the first thing I believe is the love and it's declared, I need to agree with it. Second one, God speaks and we need to say yes to him. We need to be in agreement with him. I'm going to read here something that the Lord, the Lord has declared about me, about you, God's people. I need to listen to this. But here, Adam and Eve did not listen to it. They were in the state of innocence. They were in the state of perfection. And God's people, as far as their holiness was concerned, but they fell into the forbidden fruit and they ate. And now we are living under the spell of this. And all the world is in the grip of the enemy. This is what the scripture says. All the world has been blinded by the God of this world. People are devoted to their religion and they are performing difficult things nowadays. And religion, they believe, and it will not take them anywhere. They need Savior. They need Jesus. They need someone who paid the penalty for sin. Because God is not only love. He is also a judge. He is a just God. And his justice has been satisfied on the cross. Jesus fulfilled the justice of God. So love and justice must meet. And God's people, they meet in the cross. Let me read this to you. First of all, uh, maybe you make it a second point. And the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man, this is the first hand command, Eve is not yet created. Eve was created by a finer material. Man was created from the dust and the, the, uh, the material that was used to create Eve was much more refined because she came from from the rib, one of the rib of Adam was taken out and God did make her from the dust. It was a refined dust. We are also refined dust. And all the ingredients that are in the dust are in us. So there is no boasting. But I tell you, it was a better material than uh, with which uh, Adam, I'm not sure about it. So this is what I think. If it's wrong, forgive me. And Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And this was God's only command to them, and they broke it openly they broke it absolutely and uh, they were innocent but they were not mature of course they could have been matured and if they would mature, be mature a bit then they will say we are not going to the rest of our life in soulish life because they became a living soul 
and then they will decide to just lay aside the soul life, our soulish life, and they will eat of the tree of life, and they will have Christ, and God will be one with them. This is what the scripture says. But before they could eat, because the tree of life was in the garden, and uh, and I believe Adam knew that this is the source of all life. This is the source of everything that is in God. It is the one who is the creator of every God, every, every tree and everything that exists in the world. So we believe, and I don't need to tell you in detail, uh, there was a walking snake. It was not a crawling snake. It was a walking snake. And it, it came, and in that snake or in that serpent, devil was sitting he had occupied because he is a spirit devil is a spirit once he was lucifer then he chose to have selfish life and selfish life brought him to the to the stage of satan and he became de devil and then because he is not omnipresent he is not omnipotent god kicked him from his presence and he became a cut out withering branch. That's what he is. But he cannot repent. He cannot give up fighting. And the last fight is going to be fought by him. And then he will be locked for 1,000 years. He will be given another opportunity. And there will be another purification. And then it will be forever and ever he will be in Last eternity, he will be in hell in the lake of fire. Then uh, we remember, let's read two, just, just two verses, what happened here. They did not agree with God. Uh, Eve chose to agree with the devil. And Adam chose to agree with Eve. And then we know that Adam became a sinner. And every one of us is born with the seed of Adam. And because of the seed of Adam, Adam, we are born with sin nature. So God's people, he who is hearing, let me tell you very clearly, this is what the Bible says. This is what the scripture says. We are the children of a sinful seed. We are born of a corrupt seed. But then there's an opportunity to be born of incorruptible seed. And that incorruptible seed himself is Jesus. That is what devil could not figure out, that I am dealing with Christ Jesus, and then this Christ Jesus will live in, with millions of people, and he was upset. So that's why he is trying his best for Christian not to believe in the real love, that is Jesus himself, in the real life, that is Jesus Christ, and they are living their own life. Church is teaching this, living their own life, doing their own things. Man is being exalted. And then man does something and he tells you, look what I have done. And uh, the result in the end is from the mouth of Jesus, they're going to hear, I don't know you. I've said so many things in short words and which you understand very clearly. And I hope the other people will be understanding too. This is what happened. And when the woman saw that the tree was good, forbidden was good. That's awkward, isn't it? That is a backward uh, way one could live. That is an awkward way one could live. But they were innocent. She didn't know what she is doing. She didn't have that depth of maturity. She was innocent. She was sinless, but she was not mature. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for, uh, good for food, was good for food. But don't you know it is forbidden? No, they didn't agree with God. They did not agree with God and put the mankind into, into the slavery of Satan. Then God made a way out and he promised Messiah, of course. Uh, you can read in chapter 3, verse 15. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to, 
to be desired to make one wise. Three things God's people and she ate of it and she did not agree with God. She did not agree with God and Adam followed him and then God didn't like that he followed him but he did. And she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. Why? Self-assertion woke up. Self-life woke up. They were not self-asserted people. They were not the people who were occupied by self. They were occupied outwardly by God. And they could be inwardly occupied if they will eat the tree of life. But they didn't do it. And they sued fig leaves. And that is the cause of all these religions. I personally believe and I declare it boldly in the understanding of the scripture. Religion is just like fig tree. It cannot stand the, the heat of the day. It cannot be comfortable. I tell you, and fig leaves, I don't know why did they choose fig leaves. We have got a fig tree in our, in our house and you touch it and it stinks. And I don't know how they could manage, but they didn't like that they were naked because they were naked because they did not agree with God. They disagreed with God. So God's people, it's so possible to disagree with God. It's so possible that we are ignorant of it or we can easily be disagreed with God. Then another thing uh, that is dangerous, and that is also in another scripture, I want you to come with me to another scripture. Here also, if couples will agree with God, if they will agree with God, first of all, if they will let God choose, and then Bible says, whom God has joined together, let no man separate. But I tell you, I sometimes give emphasis on God's choice. God's choice is hard to find, and God's choice is not always made. Majority of the couples make their own choice, or some other has made a choice. When it's a God's choice, I tell you, is going to be marvelous. Listen to this now. And this is the book of the generations of Adam. Listen to this word that Holy Spirit uses here, uh, chapter 5 and verse 1. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of create, in the likeness of God made he him. Woman was in him. Of course, it was. Uh, that uh, rib that has not yet been created into a beautiful woman. Male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. Uh, it's, not, it's not the way we are dealing with the situation now. Our trust, gender and all this nonsense that the world is trying to introduce. And uh, it simply says, male and female created he them and bless them and call their name Adam. You must remember this, you called their name Adam in the day when they were created. In the day they were created, he called their name Adam. And if every couple brought together can believe this or agree with this, that we are one, he calls us one. He sees us one, things will be different. Of course, this is another point that if we agree with God's concept, if we agree with God's idea, then of course we will be walking on a different ground, living on a different ground and living so wonderfully. And then of course, you know the story of Cain. Cain was told to agree with God. He chose not to agree with God. And then the Bible says that he was supposed to be vagabond. But if you read the account of Cain, Cain was the first one to create civilization. 
the first city that was ever mentioned in history was the name of his son. He was supposed to be wanderer, but he was defiant. And I will show God what can I do. And he was the first one who made a city. And that city created some art. There was some music. Man was not ready for the music. Just as if there has been some music, rock and roll and all this, Lenin and all these people introduced music and they brought filth in the world. I, I heard someone, uh, Lenin was asked, how did you get this message and how did you get this music? Music. He said, I, it was received from there. It came to me in there. That must be purely from devil. It must be a devil created music. And these, this was this was a group who once said that we are more uh, famous than Christ. Absolutely rubbish, and uh, but people loved it. And uh, Cain was the one who introduced the art. Cain was the one who introduced. He created the civilization. He was not supposed to be uh, the owner of the civilization, but that's how the twisted mind of man can do. This is what the sinful man can do, God's people. So people don't believe in God. I would recommend you to read the story of Cain and Abel and how they were against God. Then I want you to come to another wonderful man. We call him Father Abraham. And uh, he gives us some hint that uh, it's good to believe in God. He gave us some hint that it's good to listen to God. Do not mix in the word of God. Do not take the word of God lightly. If God says you have to do it, then you have to do it. Don't expect the other person will do it and you will have the same result. I'm, like to I'm going to read to you uh, from chapter 11 of Genesis. Listen to this very carefully. And here also we see man mixing the word of God. Here we see the man partially obeying the word of God. And here we see the problem man is creating for himself and the people around him. Uh, let's read from chapter 11 of Genesis, and I'm going to read from verse 31. Come with me, God's people, and read it and know the truth that is in this passage. Chapter 11, verse 31, and Terah, took, uh, Terah was Abraham's father, and Terah took Abraham as his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son, uh, his son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of Chaldean. That's where Abraham was living with his family. I believe God spoke to him, and we will make it very clear that I want you to, I want you to leave because your father, I believe, God knew that Father Tara is so much into idol worship that he will not believe. So God told him to leave, to go to a land of Canaan. What they are doing, Tara took them out. It's a cultural thing. Man is make dec making decision. Daddy is making decision. Uh, I believe Abraham said, uh, Father, uh, I have been told by God, I've heard distinctly that I'm going to leave you. And he said, oh, Father, oh, my son, or you, your son, your brother is dead and I want to go with you. Let's go together. Let's keep the company. And uh, I believe Abraham could not, could not uh, withstand this argument. And they came into Haran and dwelt there. Where did they want to go? Canaan. I believe God told Abraham and he told Terah, his dad. And the dad said, I will go with you and other will go with you. And that was a mixture. It was not the pure word of God. And the days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran. But now we get the clue that originally the word came to Abraham. Abraham has told daddy, I am called to leave you, Papa, and I'm going to 
go to a place where God has called me. And the terror said, no, my son, I will feel lonely. I will go with you. God's word was compromised here. And it put the obedience to the word of God 15 years back. God didn't appear to him until Tamar died. God's people, we might make a choice between God's word and the words of the people around. We should not have any influence on the people around and not be captivated by their interesting word. Now, this is the, this is the key where we can understand that Tara was told by Abraham to leave. Abraham said, I'm going to leave. And he said, I will go with you. And he couldn't argue with daddy. That was a different society. They obeyed their parents without question. Now the Lord had, not has, the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and unto a land that I will show you. I will show you land. And uh, he made another mistake still. And uh, what he did was law, uh, he took Lot with him. And Lot was a lot of problem, I tell you. Lot was a pain in the neck. In the end, uh, he has to leave. And he chose the thing of the world and the pleasant land. And Abraham began to flourish after that. And I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, powerful blessing, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth will be blessed. And uh, if you keep reading, you will know that Lot decided to take, uh, make company with daddy and he went with him. And so it was a partial obedience. Again, we say, God told them that I'm going to give you a promised son. And there also was a compromise. Sarah, one day in home, was thinking of a plan, plan that was against the will of God, plan that was supposed to uh, give her responsibility to Hagar. And though Abraham had a great, uh, great vision with God, a great encounter with God when he came home. Sarah was all powerful and ready, just like Eve. And she said to him, I am not bearing children, and I am now uh, behind bearing children. God may not be able to do what he told to do. So you take my handmaid, or uh, take Hagar, the slave girl, and uh, you produce a baby for me. It will be good enough for me. And Abraham agreed to that, uh, uh, that thing that was cultural. I think in their culture, uh, they were having slave girls as wives as well. So Abraham was going by the culture of God until he was tipped by his wife. And he listened to his wife and produced Ishmael. Ishmael was man's idea. It was not God's idea. And because it was man's idea from the day he was born, he was a pain in the neck. He was cause of division. At the moment, what we see in the Middle East, the root of this, uh, this fight is the same. Still, what Abraham decided to do. So God's people, what I'm trying to say is, what if the people agree what God says? What would happen if he would not take Lot with him? What would happen if he would not compromise with daddy? 15 years will not be lost. But God still spoke to him. What I'm trying to dis make distinction is the word of God and never ever please compromise with the word of God. And if we won't do it, God will, uh, God will prove what he has declared. What I'm trying to say, God's people need to agree with the word of God. 
I need to agree with the word of God. And the last one I think I should go for is Isaiah 53 and verse 5. Again, is the declaration of God. Again, is so clearly declared who we are. And all we need to do is to be prepared to agree with God. That's what I'm trying to say. God's people, let's take a hard line on this. Hard line simply is I'm going to make a decision to agree with God. I am going to go with God. I'm not going to compromise with what God says. I will obey what God says unquestionably. Here is in verse 5, chapter 53, all uh, the verses are wonderful and it's good to read them. But I, for the sake of time, because our time is almost gone, I'm going to read verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Full stop. Period. By his stripes and with his stripes we are healed. And then we hear the confirmation of this word from Matthew chapter, chapter 5 and verse 16. That was the confirmation of this wonderful prophecy that that's what God says about me. Will I agree with him? Will I agree with him? That is my choice. So it's a very powerful choice. Am I going to agree with him? And am I going to agree with the, with the spirit of fear? I tell you, the spirit of fear can easily take over. I have seen it over and over again. I saw the power of fear in 1992, something that I suffered many years ago and God healed, then fear came and I was in this dreadful disease for, five, for two months till the Lord sent his word and uh, he reminded me that I broke your yoke. Why did you allow fear to put the yoke on your neck again? And now you're suffering. As soon as I believed the word of God, I was again okay. But I'm going to read to you chapter, uh, chapter 8 and verse 16 and 17. Just these two verses. And in this is the confirmation. And it's written about Jesus that uh, he was casting out demons uh, and he was doing it all. Verse 16. Then he, then the even. And I'll, I'll say, when the even was come, I'm reading from verse 16, please. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and, the, and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick. He healed all. And then wonderful confirmation over the prophecy of Isaiah. It is written that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. When he bore my sickness, I need to agree with him. I need to come to God and be so much in touch with the Lord. But that will take intimacy. That will take getting to know him. That will not be with an ordinary life. That has to be walking on a different ground or coming to the ground of God. If I say that I stay on my own ground and it will be fulfilled, no, the devil will not allow you to agree with it. He is, he is also, he's not all powerful, but I tell you, he has got power. He has got power. How do I know it? Look around and you will see his power. So watch it, God's people. I think the time is up. I won't go any further. And uh, I simply want you to just agree with God. And lastly, I would read this verse. And that's chapter 5 and verse 14. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. Agree with God, God's people. And you will see marvelous things 
in your life, in our lives. In verse 14, Matthew, Matthew 5 and verse 14 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. You are the light of the world. Let's agree with this. And when you go out, say, Lord, I thank you that I am the light of this world. You declared it so clearly. I'm going to agree with it. And I'm going to believe that someone is going to have a taste of this light. This light will shine on someone. Someone we might say, uh, could you please pray for me? And in amazement, you say, oh, why should I pray for you? And uh, he simply may say that I have seen light around you. Uh, you have got a light around you because, and it's true because God says you are the light of the world. I agree with him. I'm the light of the world. And I go out with this and I expect miracle outside. I expect miracle maybe in the cashier's office, maybe in, in, the, in the market. As someone says, could you please pray for me? And they say, why should I pray for you? And they say, well, I, I saw as you were coming, I saw the light around you. Something is in you. I'm not seen with other people. I believe this can happen normally. And this can be an evangelist without speaking a word. People asking you to pray for you and asking you to, I want to get to know. I want to have what you have. I believe we need to make not only Jewish Jewish people jealous, we must make other people jealous. And they will say, something is around you that I've not seen in others. I want to have that. God's people, I have tried to say this uh, simple word, and I believe you will be able to uh, meditate on that. Let us agree with what God says about us. Praise and glory be to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. You're such a wonderful God. You're such a glorious God. And in Christ, what a blessing we have. What a treasure we have. And we thank you that this treasure is an earthen vessel. We are earthen vessel so that we will not boast about it. We have no boast about all the wonderful things you have said about us. But Lord, we humbly come to you. And we say that we will have the courage and the anointing from your presence. That we will agree with you in everything that you say about us. We thank you for those who do not know you yet, Lord. We pray that today they will begin to think of what they're missing. And they will come to Christ, receive him, and believe all that you have said. And then walk in it. Be practical in it, to the glory of God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.